Okay, so I really don't have much time at all, so I'm just going to try and jump right into this. This is apparently my first episode of Scientific Analysis of Science Fiction Things. And I figure since I'm expanding my repertoire with this anyway, what better way to do it than by breaking the rules that I set forth in the get-go. So this so-called science fiction is more fantasy-based. I'm commentating on the uh, events in the first Christopher Reeve Superman movie, Superman the movie, mainly the ending. Now, of course, if you haven't seen it and you don't want me to spoil it, even though it's pretty old and pretty much anyone who comments on it at all always brings up the ending, uh, turn this video off right now. However, if you don't care or are interested in what I have to say anyway, then continue. Now, the main thing is, in the ending, Superman transfers backwards in time. Now, there's plenty of scientific uh, theories about time travel that note that reverse time travel should pretty much be impossible. Now, it's very difficult to try and give a good theory on how reverse tri time travel could work. I haven't heard any, and if anyone knows of any, I'd be interested on in finding out. Um, but the way that it worked in the movie was that Superman spun around the Earth, like nearly the speed of light, just spinning and spinning and spinning, and traveled backwards in time that way somehow. Apparently, by spinning so fast, he makes the Earth rotate backwards somehow, instead of everyone failing to uh, continue with the inertia of the new rotation of Earth and falling off of it. Instead, everything just kind of, the glass is filled back up, and everything, and yeah, it doesn't really make much sense that way. But that's not really what interests me about this. It's not the basic, how did he travel back in time, because traveling back in time doesn't really make sense, as much as it is the exact method he used to travel backwards in time and what it means scientifically. Now, uh, some movies have done time travel correctly. Usually, this is actually by avoiding the concept of time machines in general. You have things like Demolition Man, where the uh, main hero and main villain are frozen for decades. So time continued normally, and they were in a uh, state of suspended animation. So from their perspective, time jumped forward, but you can't go back, and it really didn't involve any strange time travel machine. They were just in suspended animation. Uh, also, one that did work on a scientific theorem of time travel was the original Planet of the Apes movie. As noted in the beginning, the crew of the ship are traveling at light speed. And as traveling at light speed, based on relativity and time-space, your perception of time is much, much slower than the perception of time around you. So while they were living normally, and they also had a sort of suspended animation in there at one point, but generally speaking, as they were walking around and breathing, the time outside seemed to be going incredibly fast. And that's the kicker for the Superman uh, time travel, because what he was doing, could that have him travel through time? Yes. Forwards. So not only was he too late to save the day, but he was too late by about, you know, a century. So that, uh... <laughs> ah, sorry, I just really uh, interesting way they had of going about it. I would assume at that point a lot of people would just assume that upon failing to save the day, Superman just left. And eventually Superman would have been forgotten and then come back like, oh wait, what I miss? Uh, oops. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, that's about all the time I have for today. It would be really good if I could travel backwards in time, but unfortunately, 
I have my own theory on exactly why that shall never be possible. It's not scientific, but I think it speaks for itself. Everyone just look around you. Remember all the life experiences you've had and ask yourself this one question. How many people from the future have you seen? Till next time.